NFL 24. A very warm day outside by Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. Today, it's the opener of the 2023 NFL season, as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, there's nothing quite like it. That feeling of beginning another NFL season, and these two squads are going to do just that in a moment. And what makes it so exciting is the range of possibilities these teams have before them, because we could be seeing one of these teams earn the Lombardi Trophy in February, while the other, they could... The post-Tom Brady era starts now. It's the Bucks and Vikings underway to begin 2023. And no run back on this one. So the new season will begin at the 25. Way out. And they will be led out by a young man making his first NFL start. His ability to adjust on the fly is almost unmatched in the game right now because it leads to a couple of snaps per game where you just sit back and ask yourself, how did he pull that off? Opponents can practice and prepare each and every week all they want. This guy, he is hard to corral. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. It'll be a loss of only a couple on the sack, but now it'll bring up third down. And this opening drive not going to plan. This is now third and 13. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Needed 13, they got 14 on third down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. They'll look to throw here on first down. He's gonna find Jefferson open downfield. Touchdown, Vikings! Justin Jefferson, 64 yards. And the Vikings are on the board here first in the season opener. Excellent start there. First drive of the season, big time success, putting it in the end zone. And remember, that was done without any real map of how to do it. In other words, the deeper you get into the season, you get game film to work off of, tendencies to work off of. The first drive of the season, things can be entirely different than what you've seen in the past. It's a really good job of execution by them. Extra point right down the middle, and it's now a 7-0 game. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. So here are the Buccaneers ready to go on offense with a new man at the helm here for 2023 in his sixth season now in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. The former number one overall pick has had his ups and downs in recent seasons, but he finished strong last year and inherits a really good offense in Tampa that should set him up for success. Now Mayfield and the Bucs come up on first and 10 at the 20. Now a third round pick a year ago. Here's Rashad White. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Second and nine now from the 21. They keep it on the ground. White again. Oh, he's hit. He lost the football. Put it on the carpet. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Do you remember in preseason when we were going to the different training camps and visiting teams, and we always would see the running backs working out and going through those gauntlet drills, and, you know, guys either slapping at the ball or the machines. You got to to take care of it. Yeah, they lost it there. Big fumble. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. 
And one of the things we like to hit on every year are the new rule changes. And we got a few for 2023. A lot are procedural, having to do with deadlines and roster construction and such. But, but two kind of caught my eye, Charles. One is the option to fair catch a kickoff and have it come out to the 25 like it does in college. You like that? I don't. I don't like it at all. I don't like it in college. I don't like it in the NFL. I want to have something different. And I really wanted the special teams coaches to be a little bit more involved. But I do understand why the league is doing it. They believe it promotes safety, and it's hard to argue against that. What about, you know, this is the other one, guys can now wear the number zero. We've already seen some make the switch. Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Swift, Braxton Berrios, amongst others. Yeah, and you know something? When you see those guys make that move, I don't mind that at all. All right? A little more expressionism for these guys. I love it. I just think we didn't go far enough. What about double zero like Jim Otto used to wear or Kenny Burrow used to wear? Let's add that back to the NFL jerseys. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw to the goal line, but it's incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test him early, but it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. On second down, they'll run it here. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. They'll look to throw on third and goal. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. Now the Vikings will send out the special teams crew here for a field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And his kick is right there. It's good, and that will extend their lead even further. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They had the auspicious beginning to the season, a first drive turnover. Now they'll try again here, first and 10. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. From the 22, here's second and eight. They run straight ahead here with White. And not much doing there. Maybe a yard up to the 23. Now third down and seven. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big one there on third down. They hit for 30 yards. Seems like all the fireworks in this first quarter have been on the other sideline, but here they're saying, hey, we've got some explosive guys on our side too. And that's a big play in a game that's looking like it might be full of big plays. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Now a give up the middle. This is White. He's got it to the 43 here. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard game. Mayfield throw on target to Godwin here. And Godwin going to have a box first down as he'll get this down inside the 35. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Mayfield to throw it. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Here's second and 10. Now back to the ground game with White. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. 
Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Micah Parsons showed off that elite athleticism as he gets the sack. And this one is no good. He missed it. And they will not cut into that 10-point lead. And anytime you see a kicker trot out to try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through. And that one winds up no good. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I think that's how this defense is going to need to play these tight ends. Again, get right up on them and stay physical. And that paid off on that play, helping force that incompletion. Now here's a handoff out of the gun. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Here is third and five. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And that ball incomplete, nearly intercepted. Took a chance with that one. It'll lead to a fourth down. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on to punt for Minnesota. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this will be out of bounds at the one here, the 12-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They'll look to get something started. They need to, down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Play fake, Mayfield. That'll be taken in downfield by Godwin. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 14 yards that time for number 14. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much-needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. First down, here's White. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Second and 10. They stay on the ground with White. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four in search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Mayfield from the gun on third down. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. The safety blitz stage of perfection that time as they sack him for a loss of six. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. They'll look to throw, shoves him aside. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, and they're down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. 
A nice completion there for the first down. And Charles, you think about the quarterbacks of recent vintage that have been thrust into action week one. It's no guarantee of future success, but we sure have seen some good ones. We certainly have, partner. How about Joe Burrow with the Bengals in 2020? He was excellent. Kyler Murray with the Cardinals. The best part about his game has his team right at the brink of the playoffs. And Deshaun Watson has won division titles after having started from day one. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring us to a third and four. They'll set up a throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Open man here, Sims complete. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Back to throw again. Looking left side, and he's got him in. That's Oliver. So he'll be stopped here for no gain. And that'll make it third and 13. Not an easy spot here. He'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. Now the Vikings will send out the special teams crew here for a field goal try. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And that will extend their lead even further. He might be being set up here for a fancy ball game already. Two kicks here in the first quarter, and he's not both through the post. And for now, you know they'll be happy getting those three points. But what they really want is to find a way for him to kick extra points instead of field goals. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. They find themselves in a good size hole here, in a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. He's got a man complete. A big play that time for Tampa Bay. 41 yards. Ah, it's got to feel good to hit on one of these in the first quarter of a brand new season. They're hoping this duo can really make some noise this year. And this is a great start. A big play here early in the ball game. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. They'll go up the middle with White. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. The defense showing some anger after giving up the big play. This time they'll lose one or two. Thirteen nothing is the score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football. Thirty-eight yard line, second and eleven. As they've got it, as we resume action. Mayfield now on second down, going for Evans, but that pass is intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And a terrific return as he takes this thing all the way down near the 20-yard line. Well, certainly not his best throw that time, and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field, guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do, and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away. Short throw caught by the tight end Oliver pushing his way through. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a really nice 15 yard pickup, and now it's first and goal.
Now back to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. They'll set up to throw. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. Now the Vikings will send out the special teams crew here for a field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And his kick here is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So they get the turnover in plus territory. The drive stalls out, but still able to get three out of that. Yeah, we were able to see an offense and a defense kind of mix and match with each other, didn't we? Both of them trying to make sure that they had the upper hand and the advantage. Offense trying to get to the end zone. Defense, of course, trying to hold them to a field goal attempt. And it wasn't a guaranteed lock three from where they started. So, you know, the offense has to be happy to come away with those three points. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Mayfield. Throw left side complete. That's right. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. Third and seven now. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. On third down, Mayfield. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. But Jake Camarda sent on now to punt this away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it's second down. A nice throw right there, and these fans getting their first look at their QB1 of the future. I'd imagine it's got to be a big plus for him to get his first start here in front of that home crowd. I know there's a school of thought about getting your first start away from home so you don't have the extra pressure of that crowd behind you. But I say ride the wave, embrace it. Go ahead and play to that level, and I think it's going to benefit him in the long run. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense. A little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Out of the gun now on third down. And to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 45-yard line. And they'll get 14 yards out of it and a fresh set of downs. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Again, he'll drop to throw. That's going to be caught by Moss. And he's brought 
down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. That one good for 37 yards. Well, he moved his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Serious. We'll take a quick timeout. Here's second and eight. Touchdown! A great play there with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Vikings are looking good here in the season opener as they're able to extend their lead. So a good start to the campaign so far for them here in week one. Yeah, all the things that you dreamed about in April and May and that you worked on in July and August, getting ready for this game, it's all coming together so far. Extra point splits the uprights, and that pushes the lead up to 23. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he returns this to the 22. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores. And I know we're in the first half, but the way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession. But I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. And if they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. Here's Mayfield. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. Keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. First down Mayfield now. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. Yeah, there's a work of art right there. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. And the football going back to the Vikings offense. Good drive last time. Really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? I would anticipate the defense making some changes, but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, well, I'm I wouldn't change it up until they showed me a reason to do so. So a much rosier picture now after that last play. Here's first and 10 at the 19-yard line. And they'll give him another 
shot here on the ground. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. At the 20 yard line. Back to throw here. He finds his man complete. That's Moss. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. And this offense on third down today, five out of nine thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And this will be a Vikings first down as he'll take this up to about the 33-yard line. Brandon, I think you and I were both raised the same way in the game of football. You run to set up the pass, but I think we've discovered in this NFL, a lot of teams pass to set up the run. And that's what they've done throughout this game. They've aired it out, thrown it around the yard. Now they've come back to the running game, and they find a way to be successful with it. So they'll come up second and seven. Back to throw. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. of the jet sweep, and here's McBride instead. And now the rookie's free. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And the Vikings are able to widen their lead here in this first half. Well, that's a good-looking rookie right there. I love how he let the play set up and then showed that explosiveness that I saw on tape in college. Remember I showed you the clip of what he was doing and setting up blocks and then he would just go? We saw it on that play right there. That one was fun to watch. Point after, right down the middle. And a route is on here in this first half. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. And they had a long drive going last time, but it stalled out. But still, maybe something positive to carry forward from that last drive. Well, a few different things that you carry forward. Number one, as you noted, they were moving it pretty well, so that gives them a lot of confidence. The second part is, keeps your defense off the field. gives them a chance to rest up a little bit. And last but not least, uh -oh. You've taken a good look at what you've done on offense, noted where the weaknesses are, and you know when you want to come back to them. I like when you're organized with your points. Well Point done. A, B, and C. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to move the sticks with a gain of four on third and inches. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up in two minutes, we'll again head down to visit with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando back for another year. He'll have scores from around the NFL here on this opening weekend. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. This is caught by Evans. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 41-yard line. running game going and they've got it inside the 10 at the eight now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half we know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught 
And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Chris Godwin from eight yards out. And the Bucs are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. Out of, okay, we're going to score eight times in a row and we're going to be terrific. But to get one, that was huge for them. That has to feel much better right now. And you do have, we're still in the first half. You do have the entire second half. There's something about that goose egg that just looked bad on that board, but now they've broken it. Yeah, broken through. Can they maintain the pace? We'll see as we go along. Taking it about the one. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Two yards on the pickup there, and it's second down. Another completion there, and what a big moment in a young quarterback's life, that first NFL start. And Charles, obviously they want him to win games, but if they're looking at him under a microscope in his first month or so, what do you think they're hoping to see from him? Well, for every question they'll have for him, they should have for themselves as a coaching staff because it's not just how quickly can he learn the offense, it's what they can teach him, right? How can he build a relationship with his receivers? And of course, how open is he to learning? And of course, how open are they to giving him things that he can put in place on the field? All right, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome back to football, everybody. We've got a full slate of 16 games here to start the new season. So let's take our first trip around the NFL. From there, we head down south to Atlanta. Check on the Falcons at home at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And they've got the lead at halftime over the visiting Carolina Panthers. Desmond Ritter with two first half touchdown passes. Finally, let's get you to Baltimore. Check on the Ravens at home at M&T Bank Stadium. As you can see the score there in the second quarter, Lamar Jackson has thrown a touchdown pass. Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. Taken at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid and he's dropped at the 18. The Bucks offense set to begin this third quarter. Well, they look up at the scoreboard facing that deficit. A three-score game, Charles, but look, there's plenty of time to go here. The old football cliche that comes to my mind is you can't get it all back at once. They probably need something, though, out of this drive, at least three points. Are you trying to say that there's no three-score drive on that play sheet for any of those coordinators? They just don't have it, right? <laughs> You're trying to get it all back. You know you can't get it back in one drive, but maybe cut into it a little bit, as you just suggested. Try and create a little bit of momentum, a little bit of a spark, and then maybe that'll carry over. Mayfield from the gun on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. It'll only be a loss of a couple, but the pressure gets home on first down. Now following the sack, they'll come up here on a second down and 12. Mayfield to throw it. This one taken in by Otten. So the completion results there in nine yards. And now we've got a third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. Ball oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. Uh, just more frustration here offensively, and you can see it in their play. 
and now their body language. You know they were hoping to put a drive together to begin this third quarter, but it's just not clicking right now. And it's going to be a quick call to the punt team. This is taken at about the 14. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Throw left side, complete to Moss. It's seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Third and three. They'll look to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage. Well done. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the second. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Now Mayfield and the Bucs come up on first and 10, just shy of the 30. The play-action fake. They'll look to throw. They're looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. Well, NFL quarterbacks have learned the hard way. You're not going to get Rich thrown against this guy. He's definitely too good. And this is now a second interception of the ball game. And if I'm running the offense, I've got to tell my guys, you've got to go work on the other corner. And now out comes Minnesota. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. Now he's able to break through one tackle, but it slowed him down enough that he could only manage getting back to the line of scrimmage. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, he'll drop to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. Rookie to rookie on the hook up there, and it's a first down. They'll set up to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Moss. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Two yards to go, second down. Back to throw again. And incomplete. Well, the secondary's really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock ball away. Turns into a nice play. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. But it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. And boy, that's going to be close. He didn't get much at all there, but he got the first. Looked like they might have held him defensively, but the referee signals it will be a first down. They'll drop to throw. And that's off the mark, incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And he rifles one incomplete. 
I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there, tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. They're going to look to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. And this one is right through. And that will extend their lead even further. So they got the turnover started with great field position, but in the end, the defense able to hold firm, and they only get three out of it. And I like what you said right there, that defense able to hold firm, backed up into the shadow of their own end zone. Goal post right behind them. They had to make sure they didn't give up the six. And boy, they came through in a big way. To them, even though they gave up three, that's a win for their side. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 18. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Yeah, a quick throw here, that's complete. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll bring up second down. Brings up second and five at the 23-yard line. Throwing Mayfield. Flush to his right. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. But following the play now, they're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. While the medical staff checks on him, we'll step aside in this week one contest. Play fake. Mayfield. That is caught. It's Chris Godwin. And he's got this down to the 35. From Viking territory now. They'll come up first and 10. Gain of eight on third and three. First down, Buccaneers. And a catch right side by Evans. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. Three yards Brings up second and seven at the 17 yard line. They'll try the right side here with White. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Following the touchdown, here's team design execution. They go play action here on first down. That's going to be caught by Moss. And they're going to have this across midfield. And From the gun, he'll hand this off. And able to steer clear of that first tackler as he works his way forward for about four. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down.
Saban making his presence felt in the backfield. Vikings will send out the special teams crew here for a field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And his kick is indeed good. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for it. You're exactly right about that. And this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, it took the decision making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. And we shift to spotlighting Mike Evans. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good, but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once, but boy, he can explode at any moment. Yeah, and when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, it, you do. It you makes get, you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. And Mayfield again with the interception. His third picked off by Pat Sertan. And he is going to get this one back to the 20-yard line. And they'll take possession already in the red zone and in a great spot to add points to the scoreboard. And Brandon, how many times have we seen a defense with a lot of field behind them get even more aggressive, right? They feel like they've got them not pinned down, but in a favorable spot for them. And they took advantage of it there. Got a nice interception and set up their offense in great shape. And he will score. Touchdown. Great play there with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Vikings are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. Well, Charles, no matter what the prognosticators say before the season, whether they think you're going to be good, bad, or somewhere in the middle, you never quite know how week one is going to play out. But for them, it has been an impressive performance, and they are well on their way to a 1-0 start. Yeah, it's a lot like opening up presents, isn't it, partner? You're not quite sure what's inside, but you're hopeful, right? In this case... Welcoming you back to Minneapolis. They'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. And they knew coming in that this would be a tough place to go in and win a season opener. But this has just been a performance, to be frank, not to be proud of here as they trail big in this fourth quarter. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together, when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them, but they also have those one-on-ones downfield. After the catch, when they're running with the ball, they think they're going to win those, too. Third down, that pass knocked down in the backfield and incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Desperation time, Mayfield on fourth down. And he's caught. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds.
So we're going to stop play here as they pay attention to him. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Mayfield off the play fake. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Put to the pass and the Vikings are going to take possession here. It's a touchback. And they'll take over at the 20-yard line. That interception may be the exclamation mark on what really all around has been a good performance. A fantastic performance. They will enjoy film session. Their grade should be very good on this one. And I think the next time the offense gets the ball, I just think about running it and getting the clock done and getting the heck out of here. And by the way, semantics here, but before the grammar police come after me, I think it's exclamation point, not mark, right? You're asking me? Seriously? Yeah, you're smarter than me. Everybody I, knows that. Listen, I go with what you say, my man. <laughs> and he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. They'll drop to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. That's pulled in at the 32. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Russell Gage amped up and ready to go as the offense returns to the field. They have to like what they've gotten from him in this game. Think about the accumulation of catches. Eight. The yards per catch now, because you're getting more than a first down every time he's touching the ball. This is the kind of game you want when you're able to throw it out wide. Absolutely. Over 100 yards, has the eight catches. So the completion results there in nine yards, and it'll bring up a second and short. Here's Mayfield. Another throw there off the mark, and obviously he's battled all of the interceptions. Things just haven't been true form for him. I don't know what he thinks going on out there, CD. That's a great question, and my suspicion is he's been coached really well to not show that he's having a problem. You know, they always tell you, no matter what, you keep throwing the football with confidence. Well, we're not seeing a confident thrower right now. He's off balance, the passing game's off balance, and the defense is taking advantage. First down, Mayfield. Another catch by White. Back-to-back -back plays. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. From the 43, here's a second and five. Now Mayfield. With this ball complete to Trey Palmer. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 34-yard line. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. So just three yards on the completion there. And that's going to bring up second down. Brings up second and seven at the 31-yard line. Going to the air again with Mayfield. That's taken in by Palmer. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Going right side is... They'll start this drive out on the ground. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 111 yards rushing for him now as he goes over the 
tree mark here in the season opener. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. And they'll keep leaning on the running game back to the ground. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. They'll set up to throw. And that is incomplete. I think it's fairly safe to call this game over, but they're still trying to bomb it downfield and add to their lead. Almost makes you start to feel for the defense and root for them a little bit, too. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that went off the mark a little late with a throw. A CD, they're up big, but they're still passing it. I mean, this is an offense that's had a lot of success in this game, and it seems like they're just having fun out there. And it does feel like there's been a shift out there, doesn't it, partner? Listen, if you're up, you can continue to do what you want to do. It's up to the other team to make you change how you do things. They'll continue to throw it around until stopped. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Bucks are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Mayfield on first down. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that'll make it second down. From the gun, Mayfield. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Here's third and a few inches. Mayfield. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. And there's a short one taken in by Otten. Calling a gain of three on the play. And that will bring up second down. Brings up second down seven at the 34 yard line. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over at that time, and it's going to lead to third down. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Mayfield now. He's got his target. That's complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 43. To throw, Mayfield. That's caught down the field by Palmer. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. That's back-to-back -back plays of over 20 yards. On a handoff, it's White. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Opting to run again here with White. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They've got it first and goal as they look to punch in a late score. Throwing Mayfield. This is White on the screen. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Nice gain of eight that time, and it's second and goal. Looking to throw. And this is caught. Well, they get one back. Picking up the late touchdown here, but still down big. Now this opening game has certainly not gone their way to this point, but, you know, that touchdown may be a, a glimmer of hope for the long season ahead. And no one in this league likes to talk about moral victories. No one likes to really just say, okay, well, maybe something went right. But you're exactly right about that. A little glimmer there. Maybe they can carry it over moving forward. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that'll cut the lead down now to 22. 
And the Vikings able to recover. The hands team does its job. Now they're down big here in the fourth. They had to try the onside kick. Can't fault them for the effort at least. No, you can't at all. And if nothing else, now you've put something that you're trying to practice, right, that you, you've worked on into a game situation. And now you can go back and dissect it. So if you need it again sometime, maybe you'll find a better way to do it. But, yeah, this game's pretty much done for them. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Here's second and seven. Brings up second and seven. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And they get him behind the line. So that short gain on first down quickly negated. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. On third down, they're going to run for it here. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. The city always a little extra excitement for week one and one of our early window games here in week one on a Sunday comes to a close. Good to be back in the booth with you, my friend. And it's good to be back in the booth with you as well. And we know that not everyone's going to start the season 1-0, right? Half the league is going to have a loss on their record. But everyone's got to build off of that opener. And how many coaches tell us every single year, you make your most progress between week one and week two. We'll see how both of these teams progress the rest of this season. So for Minnesota, that'll be a happy locker room as they start the season 1-0. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the Philadelphia Eagles. Meanwhile, for the Buccaneers, they go down to defeat here in the opener. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves next week at home against the Chicago Bears. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.